<laughs> oh, hello there. How are you? Happy Friday. Woohoo. Did you miss yesterday's episode of the Brad Show Live? Well, in case you did, Jay Cudnut stopped by to talk to us about what happens when accidents become criminal investigations. And then Carmela Warren came by to talk to us about how she saved her client $195,000 after she took money out of her 401k. Wow, great job, Carmela. And everyone was talking about the fact that they want Brad Show Live swag. Well, folks, it's coming. As you can see, right now, all we have is this, which is awesome, but we're waiting for the rest of the swag. So be patient, just be patient. I myself would enjoy a Brad Show Live t-shirt. So you hear that, Brad? Anyway, Let's watch today's show. Enjoy. 15 followers. I have 15 followers on my Facebook page. I'm so excited. I messed up though. I'm not able to friend you. You have to follow me. So follow Groundhog Sam on Facebook and I'll keep you up to date with all the goings on on Brad Show Live and Spar Bernstein. Wow, Sam is taking over the show. Yeah, just follow Sam. He'll keep you updated on everything. Don't worry about following Bradshaw Live. Don't worry about Law Offices of Spar Bernstein. Just follow that cute little rodent and he'll tell you everything. So welcome everybody. It is Friday, April 6th. It is the last day of the week. We are here to answer your immigration questions. The telephone number to call is 1-800-529-5465. I see we have three people on hold already. George calling from Trinidad, hang in there, George. And Andy from Orlando and uh, Radcliffe, hang in there as well. Everybody else, we have 12 other open lines. So if you call right now, our lines are open. I will be answering your immigration questions. 1-800-529-5465, one 529 I also have these, these things, these things. And what you do with these things, these fingers, is I'd like you to please go on your telephone or your laptop or however you're watching and please share this with your friends and family. What I learned actually today is uh, Facebook does not allow you to share into groups anymore live videos, but you can share this to on your timeline. You can share this to your friends. You can share this to uh, in Messenger if you want to send somebody in Messenger a link to this show as well. But please share this with your friends and family. That's how you help us. You help us get the word out. You help us build our, our, our numbers up. More people watching means more people we can help. And that's really what we want to do. And we need you guys, the Brad Squad, to do it for us. So please share with your friends and family. Uh, I can't share because I'm talking, so I can't do it. But please, I would like everybody, please take it. Unless you don't have a hand. And, uh, and uh, Jonathan Yo-Yo Elias, who's not here with us today, he said even if he didn't have a hand, uh, he watched this movie, My Left Foot, and he said the guy can do it with his left foot. So everybody can do it, even if you don't have hands. If you're like Captain Hook from Peter Pan, you have a hook, you can do it. So please share this with your friends and family. And by the way, everybody, I gotta say hello. I got oh my God, so many people are saying hello. Barbara Lord, Carrie Ann Wallace, Malia Loban, Shanai, Carrie Ann, I said Carrie Ann Wilds, Christy Kinsali, uh, Patrona Collins, Dion Watson, hello, Dion Watson, Trikas Taylor. Who's Trikas Taylor? Akeisha. That she's changed her name? Yep. Oh my, I'm told she changed her name. All right. She's changing her name, Trikas. Hello, Trikas, Yvonne Steele, <laughs> Carlette Harrison. Uh, who else? Why is she Trikas Taylor now? We'll find out. Maybe she'll let us know. Jella Shauna, Pauline Williams. Uh, hello, 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 all of the Brad squad. I'm saying this on the uh, Brad Show live page. Uh, Natalie McLean, thanks for joining, Natalie. And uh, who else we got here to say hello to? Jeff Bosey. Can't be a show without Jeff Bosey. Always in the house. Always in the house. Uh, Tamika Nelson, hello, hello, hello. Carrie Ann Wallace, Marge Higgs. Uh, Yvonne Steele, Carlette Harrison saying hello from wherever Carlette may be. I don't even know. Uh, and uh, Carol White, she said she shares a lot. 
so don't worry. I'm not worried about Carol White. I know Carol White's got it. I'm worried about everybody else, Carol. That is what I'm worried about. But Carol, thank you very much for sharing. I appreciate it. Jeff Bozy, hello. He says, hey, Smiley Smith says, hello. Smiley, you say hello. Please, 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 with a big smile on your face, share this to your friends and family. Yvonne Steele, thumbs up. She gives me the thumbs up, Brad. Yvonne, you have a thumb. Use it. Please share. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Shine Williams, hello, hello, hello. And Donna Roden, uh, hello. And everybody else on Brad Show Live. By the way, that's only one feed. That's just one feed. That's one feed. I've just said hello to the people who said hello to me. I mean, we at some point, we're just going to do an entire show of me just saying hello to people. They would All love right? it. So on the Law Offices of Spar and Bernstein feed, Shishi, blessed child, good afternoon, guys, she says. Lisa Bling Rose, she says, I am the number one lawyer. She using her finger, number wow. one. That's correct. And after you do that, please share this with your friends and family, Lisa Bling Rose. And Beverly Thompson, hello. Denise Johnson. Uh, who else? Mark Green the second. We know Mark Green the second? We don't know Mark Green the second. Hello, Mark Green the second. Welcome to Brad Squad. Please, everybody who's watching and part of the Brad Squad, please welcome Mark Green the second on Law Offices of Spar and Bernstein. And please give him a warm Brad Squad welcome. Christy Consali, hello. Uh, Beverly Thompson, hello. Vina Taken. Don't know where she's taken from, but she's but Vina. She's, she's, she's taken. taken. Hello, Vina Taken. Uh, Belgium Kim says hello. Who's Belgium Kim? That's I, you. I think that might that be That is me. you. And everybody else. I can go on and on and on. And everybody else. Welcome, Belgium Kim, to our show. Thank you. Thank we you. We call back. her Belgium Kim. You want to know why? It's not a secret. Okay? It's not a secret. I know it may not be obvious to everybody because it's not because she was born in Belgium. It's she true. was born in Belgium, grew up in North Carolina, lives in Harlem. <laughs> Our little Belgium kid. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And uh, I will tell you those are all true statements. It's true. Right? Everything yeah. I've said so far is true. Yeah. All right? I have no not said news. I have not said anything that is not true. I will not say anything not true the entire show. I guarantee you, and if I do say something untrue, I promise you, I promise you, I will tell you, ha, 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 only kidding. Yes. Unlike our oh, president of the United States, President Trump, I just read this today. In 2017, he made 1,950 untrue uh, claims to the press. <laughs> that is according to factcheck.org. That's oh 1,009, yep, there he is, making a lie as usual, right. 1,950. So it is only 365 days in the year. Right. Okay, so if I had to do the math, 4, uh -huh. 8, 12, 16, about approximately somewhere between five to six lies per day, according to factcheck.org. Now, he's not the only person in the world who lies. Every politician lied. Even President Obama lied. He, right. right? He does the, the only president who didn't lie, and that's, I think, a fable, is George Washington, because he cut down the cherry tree, and he told his father, I cannot lie. Not and George lie. Washington never lied. Everybody else, every president after. But nobody has lied as much as this guy. Really? I mean, he's like in another stratosphere of lying. 62% um, of the voters who are going to vote this November, mm -hmm. believe, by the way, that Donald Trump is not telling the truth. He is not an honest person. <laughs> but 34% of the people out there, yeah. there are 30, that's almost that one, that's one in three people <laughs> believe the crap that comes out of his mouth as true. Oh, are, you, are you kidding me? That's so I would love to find these people, I'm telling you. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is that I want to sell them. Okay, but I believe that I could sell them anything. Like, you know, oh, this empty Fiji bottle, if you take this and you put it into the gas tank of your car, yeah. it will move. Biodegradable. Biodegradable, <laughs> it will move. You'll be able to never have to buy gas again. And I'm gonna sell this to each and every one of them for, for five the thousand low cost of five. I mean, if, I mean I mean that's how absurd it is, yeah. how how anyone can say this man is telling the truth. That's, yeah, those are the wow. info infomercial watchers. And wow, 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 <laughs> wow, 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 wow. All right. Um, hmm. All right. So, and by the way, um, it says here, a year in review of the untrue claims from factcheck.org found Donald Trump dominating the list 
with <laughs> remarks on everything from his inauguration, you know, the largest crowd ever, ever to right. the Russia investigation, to his own tax bills. Of uh, Politico, of factcheck.org's 483 fact checks. Oh, I'm sorry, different group. PolitiFacts, 483 fact checks on Trump so far. 69% were rated mostly false, false, or pants on fire. <laughs> and his claims on Russian meddling were, were voted the lie of the year by the Washington Post. No collusion. No collusion. No that collusion. That is the lie of the year. <laughs> uh, by the way, nobody's sharing. Nobody shares. I'm not going to be getting into immigration. I'm just going to be wolf to put your foot this. Down. I'm going to put my foot down. Okay, my Line left foot. The sand. My left foot is going <laughs> Your down. My left foot is my going left down. Foot is the one go that down. you could the share the show with. The one that I could with. use, I could use to right. share the show with. So please share this with your friends. And and by the way, sharing is definitely caring. Sharing is definitely caring. Uh, here, Trump again. Here's his newest lie. Just happened. Ooh. Just happened about an hour before we got on the show. Okay. Okay. He was on Air Force One, and a reporter asked him, "Mr. Trump." You know anything about this $130,000 hush money that your lawyer paid Stormy Daniels, the porn star, to say she never had sex with you when in fact you had an affair with this woman and had sex with her multiple times while your wife was pregnant with Barrett? Right. And you, did you pay? Did you know about this $130,000 hush money? What did he say? He says, no, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so um, that's exactly what he said at wow. first. Yeah. Um, wow. So, uh, so he says literally no, and then asked why, why Mr. Trump, and the reporter followed up, right. why Mr. Trump, uh, 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 why did your attorney Michael Cohen, why did he make this payment then if you knew nothing about it, Mr. Trump? And this is his quote. You'll have to ask Michael Cohen. Michael is my attorney. You'll have to ask Michael. I'm sure you do. So, um... So, uh, Michael of uh, Avenetti, who's Stormy Dan, I like him. I like him. He seems sharp. Uh, he's a very sharp he guy. He seems very sharp. I never met him. I don't know anything about him other than he's Stormy Dan, but I like him on CNN. I yeah. like him. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. Like so, he minutes. says, so he said in a tweet, okay, Stormy Daniels' lawyer, he said in a tweet, uh, we very much look forward to testing the truthfulness of Mr. Trump's feigned lack of knowledge concerning the $130,000 payment as stated on Air Force One. As history teaches us, and this is the key quote, Yeah. as history teaches us, it is one thing to deceive the press and quite another to do so under oath. That's a fact. And then, he's so smart, this guy, Michael Avenetti. He follows it up. Uh-huh. He says, good, actually great, things come to those who wait. The strength of our case just went up exponentially. You can't have an agreement when one party doesn't know anything about it. <laughs> 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 so they're in court. Uh, it's it's just, I mean, it's so stupid. With this I mean, I can't genius. believe this guy is the president. Uh, <laughs> That's right. So he's in court saying that this that, that Stormy Daniels right. should be able to invalidate this agreement because it's an illegal agreement. Right. So now the press asks Donald Trump, "You know anything about this agreement?" No. So he just won the case for them. Agreement invalidated. They, yeah, you can't have a one-sided <laughs> agreement. How, you can't have an agreement where one party knows about it, the other party knows nothing about I, it. I've got no idea. I she don't know anything it. about this agreement. Wait, so weren't they saying that she that he had not signed it ever, and that was their original basis? I, I don't know the whole thing. I mean, I don't follow it. I mean, uh -huh. I, I think it's like a bit of a sideshow so thing. Funny. Although Jilly Bean yeah. believes Stormy Daniels, the porn star, is taking Trump down. I I don't know. I would I would find it crazy that know. that's who ends up taking him I down. Well, I would love that. And I will tell you, Jilly Bean has another conspiracy theory. Ooh, Jilly Bean's con yeah. conspiracy she, she, theory. Yeah, good. this is her other conspiracy theory. She said to me, you know, it's very interesting that all of a sudden everybody associated with Donald Trump is getting divorced. Okay, first Ooh, the son. Yeah. Why is why is the wife divorcing the son? Okay, they have five kids together. Why all of a sudden the wife decides to divorce out of nowhere and they have an uncontested divorce. Right. Why now all of a sudden is Rudolph Giuliani out of nowhere? There has been no press problems that they had any problem with his wife. Now all of a sudden he's getting divorced too. Is it, Ooh. Jilly Bean says to me, is it that they're getting divorced to try to hide their money because they know they're going down? That is deep. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. It's just a conspiracy theory. And you know, she's a really good detective. She's a very good detective. All that Night Rider she watched she is, makes yes, her yep. a very good detective. Yes. <laughs> she loves her. She loves that David Hasselhoff. <laughs> she loves that David it's Hasselhoff. So funny. <laughs> 
Was, Dave, was Knight Rider, was David Hassel, I never watched yeah, the show. Was, yeah, was he a detective? A, I just know he drove around in that in he the was car in the cool car. He solved crime, He though, solved right? crimes? I think he solved crimes. No, he just no. drove around and talked to the car. That no? was the whole That was the whole stick? show. <laughs> oh, no. I gotta ask Jill. Car? She probably knows all she would, she would know she about it. She's watched every episode multiple times. All right. The Black Panther is going to be first movie ever shown in uh, Saudi Arabia, ever. Did you ever the see 35. The Black Panther? Yes, I did. I liked it very much. Long live Wakanda. Oh, Long Wakanda live Wakanda. Wakanda forever. Yes. Is that what it is? Wakanda forever? Wakanda, or Long for, live? Wakanda forever. Oh, I see. Wakanda forever. Okay. I had, I had, maybe I had a couple of beers before I watched it. <laughs> but I knew it was something like that. No, that was, yeah, the, you got the gist. You got the gist. Yeah, I got the gist of it. Uh, Donald Trump started a trade war with China. You saw that? Yes. And now the people who voted for him, the farmers, they're all getting slammed because right. China is now going to put tariffs on yellow soybeans, black soybeans, corn, corn flour, uncombed cotton, uh, durum wheat, other wheat, and mixed wheat, and tobacco. You see this wow. map here? These are all the places where there are farms in America that now it will be more expensive for the farmers to sell their products to China. Now, if somebody were to also show the electoral map of what Donald Trump won, that, that is, is basically his voters. Trump country. That's Trump country that right there. looking pretty staunchly yes. Trump country so, right there. Um, so, I don't know. Oh my God. Oh my God, there's a lot, you that put is... a lot of, lot, well, I don't, there's a oh, lot this of is the 2016 vote in agricultural counties. And uh, apparently uh, Trump won them all. But you know what, when the farmers have to, uh, sell their farms, mm -hmm. okay? There goes the farm, as they say. Right. Uh, they're not gonna be as uh, as happy. By the way, before we get into your immigration questions, it's 1-800-529-5465. I just have to congratulate one other legal professional. Tell me, who? Uh, Judge Judy. Oof. Yes, she the just re-signed to do Judge Judy yeah. for a cool $45 million. For a season? Per for season. just one season? For one season, this woman makes $45 million. <laughs> I want to renegotiate yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I got to renegotiate like, so, myself, too. I'm not saying too. I'm worth $45 million, yeah. but if she is, then I need yeah. to renegotiate. Yeah, I got it. And she's also, <laughs> by the way, too. she's also, we don't even know how much she makes from Hot Bench, which is her spinoff that she's the producer. God. Yeah, I would, no, be, I would be giving a thumbs up, too, Judy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Agreed. I would be giving that thumbs up, too. $45 million to Feeling yell at people. Good. I do, I yell at people and nobody pays me anything. I was anything. gonna say, where's your $45 million? I, I yell at people all day long and nobody pays me anything. <laughs> all right, 1-800-529-5465. All right, let's go. George has been waiting 20 minutes from Trinidad. George, how are you? George. Pretty good, how about you? Good, good, what's going on? Uh, hello. Hello, George. I uh, am. Yeah. What's going uh, on? Yes, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? I am, I okay. am, I am. Okay, the question is, someone who's been deported from the U.S. for um, money laundering. Money laundering. Can that person, right, can that person um, marry a U.S. citizen? Will that person become eligible to reapply for residence? Uh, unlikely, because they're an aggravated felon, but they could get a waiver. But what was, was the money laundering involving a scheme involving drugs? Yeah, yes. Okay. Well, the person was the person was set up by the doesn't matter what, um, what, what the excuse, doesn't matter yeah, what the okay. excuses okay it doesn't right. Right, if you were if and I don't know if it's you or somebody else but if you pled guilty or you were found guilty of money laundering in a scheme involving drugs they're going to say that you are part of a drug conspiracy a drug trafficking you would never even get a waiver for that then so no the answer would be okay, no great. in that situation so I'm sorry about that all right thank you You're appreciate it all right. 1-800-529. I don't think he thinks that's great, but that's what it is. He's just great that I got the answer for him. 1-800-529. Who's playing with my thing here? Not my thing, my computer. <laughs> let's let's rephrase. make it rephrase. Who's playing with my computer here? All of a sudden, it just goes crazy. 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Andy in Orlando, Florida. Andy, how are you? Hello? Andy. Yes. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine, Brad. Thank you for taking my call. My pleasure. What's going I on? Got, I got one quick question, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that you can kind of give me, uh, you know, your best advice. Okay. So, I recently filed for my wife and my daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter not being my biological child. At the time that the people was your was your daughter the 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 biological child of your wife? Yes, with, with my wife. That okay, is correct. Okay. Um, right. I fathered her from uh, from birth. Part, fine. Um, okay. So. 
my wife has gotten her uh, visa. Mm-hmm. My daughter, uh, for some reason, it seemed like um, we either made an, the person that did the filing either made an error, putting my daughter as her biological child. So, of course, her visa app was sent to a different department in Kingston, Jamaica, for, I'm from Jamaica as well. So, Are you her, a citizen? Um, Are you a citizen? I am a citizen. Did you yes, file a separate application for your daughter? I believe so, yes. There was okay, one so, for my daughter and one for my wife. Yeah, so, uh, you know, whether you're the stepdad or the biological dad, it wouldn't have gone to any other department unless they're, unless you put down that you were the biological father and now they're questioning whether or not um, you are the biological father. Believe, are they asking for, like, I, a blood test or something? No, they're, they're, not even, um, they're not even asking for that. Her uh, papers were sent to that department, which would uh, show um, a biological connection, and it's just been sitting there well, your for papers about are, two Well, your now. papers are at the U.S. Embassy, um, but whether, whether I'm not sure which department it is. I'm sure there's some sort of investigative department there. But what really what the, bo- the, the, the bottom line is it really doesn't matter because she's eligible for her green card, whether you're the biological yeah. father or whether you are the stepfather because you married the wife, the, you, your wife you the, married before the child turned 18 years old. So either way, correct, either way, true. either way, she's entitled to her green card. So if it's stuck there for two months, what you need to do is we need to get a little oil to get the squeaky wheel moving. Okay, so okay. that's what you come what to would, uh, This is what you do. We, you come to us. Now, I don't do anything okay. special, but what we'll do is we'll contact you. I mean, I do special things. But in other words, it's not right. n- nothing like, you know, underhanded or anything. I mean, we'll do the legal channels, which is we'll contact, okay. we'll contact the U.S. Embassy. We'll find out what the problem is. We'll speak to the people in charge on your behalf. And we'll figure out what you need to do, what you need to present to get this child her green card. That's what needs to happen okay. at this point. My, my question now is, what would something like that cost you? Oh, that, um, obviously, I'm, I'm not in. I'm not in your state. I used to live in your state, but I'm not right. in your state right well, now. Well, we we, so we do we do phone consultations, and we'll have to sit down and look at all the paperwork that you filed and figure out what you did, and then we'll figure out how many hours we estimate we're going to work on the case, and then we'll give you we'll give you a fee. But I, I don't know off the top of my head, but you can hold on, and we can set yeah, up okay, a consultation, it, and we'll figure it out. Okay, it's not something that's going to cost me an arm or a leg, though. That's, that's uh, it's going to cost basic. it's going to cost your arm, definitely an arm. Okay. All right. But we'll cut it off. But we'll cut it off right above the elbow. But hold on. We give you. We'll give you a nice payment plan, so it will make it easy for you. Hold on one second. All right. All right. All right. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five. Lady Bear in Brooklyn, New York. Hi. Good that- afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you, Lady have- Bear. How are you? I am good. How are you? Good. good. How, what? Have- what, what is, let me just. I because I'm just curious. Lady Bear. What? 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 what where is that from? Or is that just a, it's just a Jamaican thing. It's just a Jamaican thing. They call me Lady Bear because, I, you know, I tend to shelter my kids so much. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, I see. In, in America, we call them helicopter moms. <laughs> <laughs> in Jamaica, they you call them so Lady funny. Bears. But in America, we call them helicopter moms. Okay, so what is your question? I have a quick question. Yes. I was married, say, like eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And I put my paperwork in, but my husband did not go with me. I got my social and my work permit, but that has expired, obviously. Right. But my husband did not go with me to the interview eight years ago. However, uh-huh. I have since divorced, and I am recently married. Okay. Should there be any itches in putting in my paperwork? Well, you're allowed to fall in love, fall out of love, yes. fall in love again. And mm-hmm. that's what you're basically describing to me. So unless right. there was some sort of fraud in that first marriage, or no. then, then you have nothing no. to worry about. Thank you so very all much. All right. All right. And if you need help, we're right across the river. Hold on one second. All right. 1-800-529-5465. Jing Jing in Overland Park, Kansas. Jing Jing. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Jing Jing. Yeah. What's I just want to have a... I want to ask a question. Go ahead. Um, I just want to ask if possible that my daughter in Philippines, can I petition her? I'm a green card card holder, but in my interview in embassy before and in my medical, it just only shows that I only have two daughters. It's physically with me now here in Oberland Park, but I have one daughter left in my in Philippines. But I did not declare her Why? that I have other daughters. Why didn't you declare her? 
Ah, uh, my my we're divorced now. My husband, my former, he told me not to. All right, uh, stop. My daughter stop. Because... I don't. I want you to be quiet now. All right. I'm uh -huh. not sure. I'm not sure what you did. I don't want to hear it on the on here right now because you may have done something wrong that can cause you a big problem. Because it sounds like okay. there was some sort of misrepresentation. You didn't tell everybody about all of your children. For some reason, you were listening to your husband, whatever it may be. It still may very yeah. well be. It still may very well be a misrepresentation that can cause not only you filing for your daughter a problem, it could cause you a problem in losing your green card. So I don't want you to say anything more on the air. I'm going to suggest that we have a private one-on-one -on -one attorney consultation. Hold on one second, okay? 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Lanny in Queens, New York. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, attorney. Good How afternoon. are you? How are you? Uh, oh, my God. I'm, I'm not good, attorney. What's because wrong? I have an interview on immigration on April 11th. Right. And then my husband is gone. He's going to the Philippines with other women. So oh what can God. I do? Well, he left you. He left you? Yeah. All right. Do you, is, this for, he, is this for your two-year or your ten-year? This this is for my green card. Just for your two years. Two years. Okay. How long yeah. were you married? Oh, uh, we have ten uh, ten months already. Ten returning months. Returning one year on May. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you lived together with him. When did he leave you? I'm sorry to hear yeah. this. When we, did he leave you? We live. Yeah, we live together still now with him. You still live with him? Yeah. Even though so he's with live. another woman. Yeah. He told me that he, uh, we still live we live together with him. What, what, all right. Well, all right. Well, that's a little crazy, and um, we'll get into why you're doing that in a second. Is there any abuse in the relationship? Are you in any danger right now? Uh, no. Just only I have a uh, send me a message something that threatened me that he said if you send any message to my my girl, and then I don't let you to get your green card. All right. I let you to divorce. So what can I do on April right. 11? So well, either it's going to be one of two things. Either you're being emotionally abused, and I'm not sure if you are or not, and we would have to figure that one out, or mm -hmm. we're going to have to figure out another way to get a green card because he's obviously not showing up. Why you're living there still, I don't know. So I think you're in Queens, and I think what you need to do is have a consultation with us. Let's discuss these threatening text messages that he's sending you. Maybe there's more to it. We would really need to sit down and have a thorough consultation, a thorough review of everything that's going on in the marriage before I can tell you whether or not maybe there's something there about extreme emotional abuse. And if there is, we're going to deal with it. Or if not, yeah, we got we to figure out another way. So hold on one second, okay? Let's go to Melissa in Long Island, New York. Melissa. Hi, Brad. Hi, Good how afternoon. are you? Um, I have three questions. Go ahead. Three. Oh, three questions. Three Hope questions. you can help me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I should have a pen <laughs> okay. or something or something. I've got to write all this down. All the right. Go question, one at a time. Don't ask me all at once because my memory no, is... No, I won't. Okay, one at a time. First question is for a friend. Um, mm -hmm. She was here um, nine years ago. She had a, she had twins up here, and I know the saying, you know, when you have kids here and you leave, you can never come back. Um, she is getting married to a U.S. citizen um, in Trinidad, so she wanted to know what's the process if, because she's getting married to a U.S. citizen, if he would be able to file for her and, and so forth, come back to the States. The answer is yes. She, he can file for her. There may or may not be a misrepresentation on what her intention was when she gave birth in the United States. Okay. So, you know, th these are, I, and I have no idea what happened with her, but these are, let me just give you two extreme examples. Mm -hmm. One extreme example is, is that she lived here, maybe she came on a student visa and she was here for several years on a student visa, gave birth and went home. Mm -hmm. She didn't come, she didn't enter the United States for the purpose of giving birth. She was here and gave birth a while after her entry. Another, okay, that's not a problem. Okay, they still won't give her back a visa, but she can certainly get a green card, okay, okay. Uh, through marriage. Now, here's the issue. She got on the plane from Trinidad when she was seven and a half months pregnant. She did not tell the people uh, when she got her visa at the U.S. Embassy, nor at the airport when she was inspected that she was pregnant. She hid a pregnancy under her big heavy coat or whatever it may be. Nobody realized she was pregnant. She entered the United States. She immediately went to see a doctor. Uh, she applied for Medicaid for her unborn children. She gave birth here. And three months later, she packed up and went home. That's misrepresentation. So I, you know, I don't know what happened. Now, assuming it, that's what happened, part two, not part one, she should get a waiver. We have to file a waiver for her. 
But okay. either way, she's going to have to go get married. That's the only way to get, get a green card. Got you. Thank right. you. All right. Part, now, second question. Second question is for myself. <laughs> okay. Um, I have been married seven years now. Separated from my husband, we're actually going to divorce. We do have one child together. I haven't seen him in probably three years. Um, Does he help support the child? No. Why don't I why, actually why? apply for divorce with um, custody and maintenance? You don't. You don't. You don't want you. You want him out of out of your, you and your child's life. You don't want him to pay anything to help support this child. Well, when I did the paperwork, I because there's a child involved. I was um, informed that I have to request um, maintenance, so I did do that minimum. Mm -hmm. Nothing to talk about. Um, my question is though. Um, and I would like to get her passport renewed now because I don't know where he is. Well, you have full you have full custody of this child. No, I'm um, still the divorce is still pending. Oh. I haven't gotten a ruling right, on so it you, yet. So, all right, so you would need to get full custody of the child. Once you get full custody of the child, mm -hmm. um, then you don't need a signature for the passport. But until okay, that so, day, so you got to speak to your matrimonial attorney. There's no way I could get it before then, the, then speak, the ruling. Speak to your matrimonial attorney. I don't know where you are in the process. Okay. Right, but if you need you need a, you need something to say you have custody of this child. Okay. And by the way, we have matrimonial attorneys here. It's just not my expertise, and you can certainly come see uh, Megan and Kristen here, and they'll be happily help you. Okay, perfect. All Thank right. you. All right. It, well, you said there was a third one. Actually, you answered it by answering the second one as well. All right. So, so hold on, if you want to see Megan and Kristen, and you can talk to them about your divorce. Uh, let's go. Where are we going? Stacy in Brooklyn. Stacy in Brooklyn. How are you? Hi, I'm Hi, fine. Hi, Stacy. What's happening? Oh, so I have a question. So my brother recently did a citizenship interview. He passed the test, but because he owes in child support, they asked for documents to prove that he's paying. Does he have to pay like all of the balance in order for them not to deny him? No, well, that would be it. That would be the preferable thing. But you know, if it, you have to show up, you're a person of good moral character. So if you're back due on child support, it does does impact on your moral character. Now, sometimes you're back due because you can't afford to pay it. And, you know, there's extenuating circumstances and the extent of how much he owes and how often he was paying all will, will come into play. But I can't tell okay. you, I can't tell you, well, if he owes a thousand, he'll become a citizen. If he owes three thousand, he won't. It's, it's on a case by case specific basis. So would it be a good idea to just pay, pay yes. off the total? Again? Yes. Yes. If he wants to become a citizen, that would be a great idea. Okay. Thank you so you're much. You're very welcome. All right, 1-800-529-5465. Uh, we have a bunch of open lines, so if you call, we will get you on our show. The other thing I gotta remind everybody, okay, is take out your fingers, these things. Hi, I'm waving to you. I'm using it to wave to you. I'm also using it to show you that you have them, and you can take out your phone, like I'm doing. <laughs> if it was plugged in. There we go. I'm taking out my phone. That's exactly what my phone looks like right now. And I'm sharing this to all of my friends and I'm sharing this on my timeline as well. So if you please share this. Is this page, is this shared on Groundhog Sam's? It is shared on Groundhog Sam's. It is? Is it's it shared on Belgium Kim? It is shared on the Belgium is Kim it, page. Is it shared on my personal Facebook page? It is shared on your personal it is Facebook on my page. It is shared on my personal it Facebook. Is. And it's shared on Bradshaw Live. That's a real stream. It's already streaming, yeah. And it's already streaming. And yep. it's streaming also on Law Offices of Spar and Bernstein. Correct. I wonder, There's so many places. I wonder if, I wonder if, if, if it was shared to like Tamika Nelson's page. I bet you Tamika Nelson shared it on her own page. You think she did? I think she shared it on her own timeline. As a matter of fact, so? I'm going to go Marge check right Higgs? now. What about Marge Higgs? Ooh, Glamour. You think Glamour? Pretty good. Do you think, you think, you, good do you think she shared it? T Tamika shared it. Princess Martin? Day. Princess is a yes. I would say Princess is a definite yes. Velma Taken? You think she shared? V Vina Taken definitely shares. What she about Velma? <laughs> there is no Velma. There is. There's there is a, a Velma. Vina Taken There's and a Velma, Velma Gale. Yeah, Velma Gale. I got them confused, but Velma I know Gale it right. Shares. You think Velma? Velma Christy Kinsali, who watches on every possible... You, you think Christy's also watching on Groundhog Sam and on Belgium? Because she watches, she watches <laughs> everywhere. Uh, Lisa Bling Rose, you think she's sharing? Lisa Bling Rose definitely shares. I think Lisa Bling Rose shares multiple times. How many people do you think I have to shame into sharing? The thing is, you're... We can, we can shame them into sharing. And I'm starting to be 
friends with them. I see your profiles now. I'm gonna know if yeah. you share. We, and we're we, gonna call we're, you we're out. gonna shame everybody we're into gonna, sharing. <laughs> the, shame them the into wall sharing. Of shame sharing. Shame share. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's go to uh, Novalette in Syracuse. Novalette. Novalette. Hi. Hi, Novalette. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. What's going on? Okay. Um, Brad, I yes. sent my paperwork from June last year. I did the fingerprint in August, but I haven't gotten any response since. What you paperwork? Have any idea what, what's what, going on? Yeah, but you got to fill me in a little bit. What paperwork did you do? Um, I haven't gotten a work permit. All right, I so you filed, all right, so you filed an adjustment, and this was over the summer? An adjustment status, yeah. All right. Now, when after you filed the adjustment, did immigration ever write you back a letter saying you're missing some documents? No, but... They never did? Everything is in. They didn't say that I missed and anything. And this is from the summer? This is from summer last year, all right, and I did all the right. print in August. Novalette, you're screwed up somewhere. I don't know where. Okay, because uh, the, if immigration didn't write you back, then either you screwed up or immigration mailed out the work permit to you and the mailman lost it. It's one or the other. I don't know. Have you but called, I, have you called I, I, the 1-800 number and, and asked them what happened to it? Yes, I called. I spoke to a lady today. She said um, she's going to mail me a letter in a week. That's all she said. And... She said I can make an appointment and go to the immigration office and find out what's going on. Because mm. every time I call, they tell me like, oh, in two weeks, I'm going to mail you a letter. And I never received yeah, anything I, that's from I, in I, January. I, I, you should have gotten it. I don't know the reason why, but it's one of two. Either you're, I, I, There's only two reasons why you wouldn't have gotten your work permit. The mailman lost it. You screwed up. I don't know which one. But, you know, if you want to hold on, we can have a consultation with you, even from Syracuse, New York. And we'll figure it out. All right. Thank hold you. Hold on. Hold on. 1-800-529-5465. We're coming to that part of our show where we interact with everybody who is making comments on Facebook, Bradshaw Live, Law Offices of Spar Bernstein. Who's monitoring Groundhog Sam's page? Who's monitoring Belgium Kim's page? Who's monitoring... My personal page, I should be it, but I can't. Who's monitoring? The whole social media team. The entire social media team. We got a team of people back there, folks. Yeah. We're official now. Mm. I love how Groundhog Sam throws in, go follow me. Yes. Right, that, like, that was like the first thing. Shameless put, plug. You, uh, shameless <laughs> plug is right. I mean, I mean he's work, Groundhog Sam works for us, right? Right. He should be like, go watch the Bradshaw Live. Not nope, once. Nope, nope, Not it's once. all about Groundhog Sam now. He just loves him some Loves him. himself. You know who I'm a little bit peeved at right what? now is Jeff Bosey. What is he doing? I, as, as promised, yeah. I went and stalked some of our Brad Squad on their pages to make sure that they were sharing. Jeff Bosey never shares. Has never not shared once. the show. Not once. Not once. Not once. And he's probably a popular guy. And he's probably a popular guy. Right. Not only that, he's been watching our show Since the for beginning. For free. Since the beginning. From the beginning. All right. Send him a bill. Oh, aren't I the... <laughs> his chances are looking worse and worse in Brad Court. Yeah, who else have you stalked that claims they share with him? We know Jeff Bosey claims he shares and he doesn't. And he doesn't. Who else? Now, Tamika is the opposite. Tamika is like, I'm at the airport and I am still sharing. That's what I like to see. See? That's, That's what I like to we, see. We got the tried and true. That's what I like to see. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. We got one more person on hold. Okay. We're going to speak to Barry from Brooklyn. Okay. And then I want you to get all of your immigration questions still and we're going to do our, we're going to go fast social media questions. All got right? it. Barry in Brooklyn, how are you? Good evening, Brad. I'm good. What's going on? Um, I'm I recently did my citizenship interview, which I passed through marriage, right? Right. I'm, I'm in line now for the old ceremony, but me and my wife is talking about getting a divorce. Will that have any effect on it? How long have you had a green card? Three years. Yes, it's going to have an effect because you've got to show up for your interview and prove it's a bona fide marriage that you're living together and in love. 
And you just told us you're thinking no, of getting no, a divorce? No, no, no. I have a 10-year green card. I did my citizenship interview. I passed. I'm in line how long to have you had, How long have you had a green card? Yeah, three years. Just three years? What about since your conditional card or from your permanent card? Permanent. What about a conditional card? No, I have a 10-year green card. But you're not ask, answering my question. Did you, when you got your green card, were you married for more than two years or less than yes, two years? Yes, 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 yes. Two married? years, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So, you got, so, so when did you get the conditional? Um, I got it in 2014. Okay, so you're still not even at five years yet. You got you to gotta be in a bona fide marriage up until the day you swear in. Okay. That's the answer. Okay, all right. All right. Thank you. All right. 1-800-529-5465. All right, Kimmy, Kim, Kim, hit me. Break book wants to know. Oh, I really thought you were going to turn around and punch me. <laughs> I'm like, hit me. I, I, I was waiting for like, boom, you know. I, I'm, I'm a pacifist, Brad. <laughs> okay, good. All right, good. <laughs> um, Break Bulk wants to know, if I entered the United States as a visitor, overstay for about a year now. <gasps> oh, wait. What's happening? Nah. Nah. Did you just make a programming decision yeah, in your head? Yeah, I was gonna, because I wanted to do Anna, Banana, yes. before we got into our Facebook questions. Okay. But then I said, Jeff doesn't even share. He doesn't deserve He doesn't deserve Anna, Anna Banana, Anna banana that's, today. That's how we, that's how we penalize Jeff He doesn't Jeff even deserve Bozy. it. <laughs> oh, Jeff's calling now to get on the show. I'm sure I'm he sure is. I'm sure he is. Yeah, we won't even let him <laughs> off. All right, answer no, your questions. No. <laughs> Break says, if I enter the United States as a visitor, I've overstayed for about a year now. My mother recently became a citizen. A citizen. Could she file for me as her adult son? And if she could, how long is the process? She can file for you, but it's, you're gonna wait about seven, eight years. Could, would he have to go back home or could he stay here for that? No, he's gonna he's, end up going back yeah. home and have to do a provisional waiver if he overstays. Kennedy wants to know, if you have your kids in Jamaica and you wanna file for them, but they have a different last name than you, can you still file for them or do they need to get their name changed? My name is on their birth certificate. Who wants to file for who? Uh, father wants to file for his kids. Well, if you're not married but, to the mother, you not only you have to prove that you're the biological father, adding your name onto a birth certificate years later doesn't do anything. That's proof of absolutely nothing. Any man could add their name onto a birth certificate 10 years after your kid was born or 20 years after your kid was born. What you have to prove is you're the biological father. They're going to make you take a blood test. You're going to get affidavits from people saying you're the biological father. And if you were never married to the mother, and I presume you weren't because that's why your name's not on the birth certificate, you're also going to have to prove that you had a bona fide relationship with your children from birth to 18. What is a bona fide relationship? How are you going to prove it? Here's me and my son with my arm around him at his birthday. Here's a picture. I was in his life. Here's money. Here's proof I, I helped support him. Here's the school records. I signed the uh, report card. I yelled at him when he got C's, which is what I do to my son. As you should. As I should. As you should. C's yes. aren't acceptable. C's are not acceptable. Especially for the son of a, yes. a, of a lawyer. He's got Correct. big shoes to fill. There's a Correct. whole legacy of right. success. Correct. And now nobody's going to want to see Zach <laughs> as a lawyer, as as a his lawyer. lawyer because he gets yeah. C's in high school. It's okay. He's already got a wife in Vakisha. Yes, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad's going to be supporting him until <laughs> I'm uh, Until forever. Yeah. Yes. You, you and, you, he and Vakisha, that's who you're going to be supporting yes. for forever. <laughs> right. And by the way, Jella Shorter says, Jeff, please share so you get to see Anna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Throw Anna Collins said, Brad, why are you doing this to Jeff? <laughs> Let's see, I, I wonder if this, is, this must be Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Yeah, well. How are you? I'm splendid, sir. How are you today? Good, good, Jeff. Why are you not sharing? So, Tell us. Why are you saying for yourself? Not only do I share to my page. Well, you know what? That's not my true. Person, my personal I page. Believe I, I believe Belgium Kim when she says she stalked you and you've never shared ever in your life. She didn't stalk good enough then not doing a good enough job stalking my page hard enough my personal page <laughs> my personal page or my other page oh wait wait oh jeff has jeff has a uh oh. jeff has a professional page <laughs> there's a, what is the difference jeff well on my other page that i have i actually mentioned you guys live on it 
and on my well, personal page I shared, and that's why my wife has been able to chime in. And she goes, oh. Oh, every time I get a notification, that's why uh -huh. she joined in accidentally because she got a notification that I shared on my personal so, page. So what you're basically so, so what you're basically saying is Kit, Belgium Kim is absolutely slandering you on live. <laughs> She is, she is trying to ruin my reputation. She's trying to ruin your reputation. Oh, <laughs> taking away my oh. banana privileges. So, taking your yes. banana privileges are all right, all right. until I get the link so Belgium, to the page. Belgium Kim, can you please apologize to Jeff Bosey? I still want to see all a right. link, Brad. What? You want I to, still want to see a all link. Right, Jeff, can I you do me a, a favor? Send, send Belgium Kim the link. Yeah. Okay, while she's as asking me the immigration questions, she'll confirm it, and we're going to show Anna Banana in a few minutes. How's that? <laughs> All right? All right, you got All it, right, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. All, All right. right, so there it is. Jeff Bosey claiming he shares. To I have no idea. Page, to no a secret page about. that nobody knows about. He has a lot of good dad, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff calls up, he goes, yeah, I share this page. Nobody knows about it. Nobody sees it. Nobody knows about it, but I do share. I love that he called to defend his honor, yes, though. Like, don't yes, you dare. Yes. All right, what are the other immigration questions? We've got another question from Elizabeth, who says, I have a big problem what? with the consulate about my son. I sent them a notification of some kind, and they sent me the following information. They said that my son missed his opportunity to enter the U.S., and they miss, he missed his priority date and entered because of his age. When I gave him a ticket, he was going to be 20 years old, but with the delay, he's now gonna be 21. Who, who sponsored him? It sounds like mom sponsored Mom's him. Mom's a citizen or a resident? That we don't know. All right, mom, call us immediately because this Child Status Protection Act, we gotta see what you did. I mean, literally, I gotta look at the paperwork because if he's turning 21 or just turned 21, mm -hmm. we gotta act immediately. We have a question from Amelda who says, how long does it take to petition for my sister if our parents are both deceased? Uh, the same as if your parents were alive, unfortunately. It's gonna take 12 to 15 years. Now, if your sister is under the age of 16 and you wanna to try to bring her here as an orphan, that's a different story and to try to adopt her. But as a sister to a sister, it's gonna take 12 to 15 years. Genevieve says, I've almost been one year here in the United States since I've been married to my husband, but he still hasn't done my paperwork. What's the first step to do for him to file my paperwork? Actually want to do it. And that's uh, get an adjustment application forms from the Immigration Service and fill them out. The I-45, the I-130, the I-765 for the work permit, the I-131 for the travel document, the I-864 for the affidavits of support. You're going to have to go take a medical exam. He's going to have to give three years tax returns, uh, four photos for you, two for him, and a filing fee of $1,765. Now, you said the first thing. I told you the 10 things that you got to do. Right. That's, that's a lot of steps. It's a lot of steps. Uh, Polito Bunny. Says, Polito Bunny. Polito Bunny. I like that name. Polito Bunny says, I'm a deported veteran who was deported to the Dominican Republic. What are they planning to do with us? They, they, they already planned it. They deported you. Okay, now in situation, we just had Hector Barajas on our show. He, he runs the deported veterans um, uh, support, support house in Tijuana, Mexico. And we should definitely get you in touch with the support house. Uh, but basically, he obtained his citizenship because he was, he was able to get a pardon, uh, so he didn't have an aggravated felony anymore. And then because he served during wartime, and I don't know when you served and if you were honorably discharged, but if you don't have an aggravated felony and you served during wartime, and wartime could be right after 9-11. Hector Barajas served right after 9-11. Mm -hmm. You can apply to, uh, to, uh, for naturalization based on your service during wartime. So that's the one thing you should be thinking about doing. Maria says, can a green card holder file for a daughter who is older than 21? Yes, as long as they're single. Bernadette wants to know, she says, hi, immigration. Hi. 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 My mom filed for my brother four years ago, but unfortunately last year she died. Although I was, uh, although I was going to be the one who was originally going to be the sponsor. Now we haven't heard anything back after the initial contact. Is there anything that we can do now? So the mom filed and she died. Mom filed for bro and died. All right, yeah. So now the sister wants to take over. Yep. Yeah. You have, you, you can't just sit around and do nothing. Once mom files for bro, 
which is her son. Yes. And mom passed away, and my condolences. It's the end of the case. So you're waiting forever. Now what you can do is you can repetition and ask for what's called a humanitarian waiver, and you actually step into your mother's shoes so you can complete her case. But that's something that you have to do on an affirmative basis after you would notify the immigration service that your mom passed away. So you're going to need help with a good lawyer like myself to do that for you. For example. For example. You know what? Tell me. Did Jeff share show you the... Uh, you know, I still haven't. Should we just? Should anything. we just? You know what? Should we give it to him? I'm gonna give. Should, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. And we're gonna wow. check over the weekend. Okay. Because we have a show to do, and I can't just sit here and wait for him. Right. Okay. To we, send us to something. To send us something. Fair. All right. So we have a show to do, but uh, if he doesn't do it over this weekend, mm -hmm. he's gonna have hell to pay on Monday. Okay. I'm telling you. I like it. All right. Hell. I like it. Hell to pay. You Hell will never pay. see Anna Banana again. We will right. shut you down while we're That's while we right. run Anna's segment. Exactly. <laughs> so so we have it we have a new segment with Anna. She's not interviewing anybody today. Okay. She's What's actually she doing? sharing her feelings on the 2020 census. Remember we talked about that the That's census right. is asking people if they are American citizens and the purpose that Donald Trump is asking the census to do this is because he's trying to uh, get people scared to answer minorities or people who are recently citizens or even permanent residents scared right. to respond to the census so they can undercount minorities and immigrants for political purposes and for purposes of, of doling out money from Washington, D.C. And Anna has a couple of comments on that as well. Let's watch. Hey friends from the Brad Show Live, I'm Anna Scona. This time I'm gonna have something a little different for you guys. Not an interview, cause clearly you don't see anybody here. But I'm gonna be talking about something that just doesn't make sense. I was reading, actually I'm, I'm gonna be honest, Jill sent me this link from CNN.com and it's about the US Census for 2020. The purpose of the census is to calculate the population in each city, town, etc., state, whatever, in order to provide the proper funding, the proper resources for education, hospitals, businesses. The point is that they're trying to ask people if they're a citizen or not. Obviously, if you're not a citizen and you're undocumented, do you think you're gonna answer the census? No. You're not gonna answer that for what? So then you live in fear, so then people can come knock on your door like hey you're illegal no they're not gonna do that the result of that is gonna be an inaccurate census and this is gonna affect the states where these people live in because the population is gonna be less which means trump is gonna give them less money what kind of bs is that why does it even matter if you're a citizen or not you know what they're trying to do they're trying to rig the system manipulate the system and pretty much get people to not answer accurately for what so they can give less money to the states it's just gonna be a whole load of oop bleep that bleep the s word guys i don't want to i don't want you guys to hear me cursing thank you guys for joining this is just my opinion but yeah educate your family educate people around you let them know what's going on so we can take action and try to put a stop to this till next time guys bye Anna, I agree. Wow. Very good, Anna. I love that. I like that. that. Yes, I like her rant. Speak some truth. Yes. Maybe we should have a more rants from Anna. I do love a good Anna rant. I like a good Anna rant. Yeah, she, she killed that. She uh, killed that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I love, yeah. All right, 1-800-529-5465. 529 We got 12 open lines right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that I've either answered every human being's question on the face of this earth. As which a, is likely. At, which is, which as it pertains to immigration or enough people are not sharing. What do you because think, Because other family? people don't know about the show existing. I already know one person who's not sharing. Do I need to I, go and gonna, look the rest of you up? I, who are you going to call out now with <laughs> fake news? Ooh. Jeff Bosey's like already saying you like called him out and it's not true. He, I, I sent him, I sent him a, a message that said waiting patiently and he said, I'm not Facebook savvy, so I'm racing here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't make us call you out on Monday. We're going to find somebody else who's part of the Brad Squad not sharing. That's right. We're going we're gonna to start shaming every last person into sharing. We're gonna call every last Brad Squad person out until we get everybody here. It's not past us. So it's gonna be a lengthy show. It's gonna but be a I lengthy think we can show. Dedicate it. All right, Tanisha McNabb says she just shared. All right, and uh, Vina Taken wants her answer. She wants her answer. She answer mine. I did. I. She didn't even leave me a message. She says answer mine. Answer Vina mine. Taken. Vina, take it. Ask it. Ask it again, Vina, because Facebook yeah. is is against you yes. and decided that they weren't going to show me yes. your questions. Yes, and so. Chanel Nas says Anne is a little firecracker, and I agree. She is when a she gets on a rant. I like it. You know, um, you know what else everybody is is what? saying today? They're saying you look really sharp. 
It's the black shirt. Everyone's used to seeing me in the white shirt. That is exactly mm-hmm. it. That mm-hmm. is exactly Maybe it. Maybe I yeah, should do black short. from now on. Black I like shirts. the black. I like, like the it. black. And you know what? No one's what? talked about the fact that you're not clean shaven. Yeah, because the black shirt. The black is, shirt is the white shirt makes you you know against the white body and the black <laughs> and the black beard. It just makes you like. Well, don't say that. I'm Look wearing like, a white shirt today. Yeah, well, you don't have a beard, you know? <laughs> That's true. So, uh, all right, what yeah. other questions we got? We've got a question from Tanya who says, does immigration request all of your medical records if you're applying for a green card through your U.S. citizen spouse? What, what do you mean all of your immigration records? All your medical records. No, you're going to take a medical exam and the doctor's going to give a medical exam, put it in a sealed envelope, and that's what's going to be submitted. Lillian says, my son is 21 years old, holding a B1, B2, multiple visas to come into the U.S. How will I petition for him and reduce the number of years that he'll have to wait? What are my options? Well, you can't reduce the years he's waiting by petitioning. The, the, The only way to reduce it is get the application in as quickly as possible. Now, maybe there's other avenues besides you petitioning him to get him a green card that could be faster. There's lots of different options. We would need to have a consultation. And that's what we got for right okay. now. So you know what I got? What do you got? All right. I had met with, uh, you know, this guy by the name of David Moreno. Oh, amazing criminal defense attorney David Moreno? That guy, yes. One and the same. All okay. right. He is uh, not only an amazing criminal defense attorney, he's also the tallest attorney in the office by far. <laughs> by far. Okay, by far. Uh, by a okay, foot or by, two. By, by at least a foot. Okay. <laughs> like, 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 you know, when he, you know, takes a step, like, you know, like I'm like when I... Next to him, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, when you I land say, on you know, him, it's actually I actually laugh. You know, like when we take a picture next to each other, <laughs> I mean, it just looks so. There is there is a really funny picture of you guys together mm-hmm. that where it's like great because he was a top forty under forty. Right, right, right. And he's so much taller and than he me. Is but, but, but you have to understand, he was a basketball player right. in in college, so he's like six foot nine. Six foot eight, something like that. Six eight, six nine. He's a you towering know, he's presence. A, he's a very, very <laughs> tall man. All right, the man played basketball in college. Right. Okay, and he's actually a fantastic criminal defense attorney. Oh my God, man, of and many talents. And we talked about today his representation of a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, and we were even talking about this. I even did this as a kid. You know, I'll admit it. You know, I took my parents' car out once without permission. Okay. okay. Yes. A little joyriding right. situation. A little joyriding situation. Yeah. I, everybody, that. but this kid did it. And when the cops went to pull him over, instead of stopping and taking taking the punishment, right. he took the he took the cops on a uh, Ooh, on a uh, what, what's, what's that what's that movie um, Fast Ferris- and Furious Fast oh. and Furious Oh okay on a Fast and Furious chase. So we had to represent him recently, okay, and the, and it worked out for him. Whew, and uh, we'll watch. And uh, the mother left a really nice nice note about David and the work that he did. Let's watch. Oh. So I'm here with David Moreno, criminal defense attorney extraordinaire here at Spar and Bernstein. David, you're looking very spiffy today. Casual Friday, I see. Thank you, Brad. You were not in court. I was in court. You today. were in court, but you were Took not in that. The but not in that sweater, though. Yeah, the sweater was here. Yeah, it's a little cold today in here. It is a little chilly in yeah. here. You know, it's supposed to be spring, but it, it hasn't arrived yet. So, um, any event, David is not here to discuss the weather. Uh, he is here to discuss criminal defense. He's a fantastic criminal defense attorney. He has multiple awards, plenty of accolades. And now, recently on AVO, people have been giving him five stars across the board. Just recently, I came across this review on AVO for David Moreno. It says, when my, son, my, when my 17-year-old son got in trouble and was arrested... I experienced a myriad of emotions, including but not, but not limited to fear, anxiety, depression, and even anger. After the first meeting with Mr. Moreno, however, I began to see a glimmer of hope. He acted promptly and gave frequent updates on the case and showed up even when it wasn't absolutely necessary, but simply because he wanted to make sure that nothing went wrong. My son will be going off to college in June without a criminal record, and I really want to thank Mr. David Moreno, a clear example of professionalism and efficiency. His number has a permanent spot in my phone. And that was from a, uh, I guess, a mother of one of your one of your clients who got arrested. Is that correct? That's correct. And that was just posted on March 19th, just recently. So obviously you gave this parent a huge sense of relief. You know, their teenage son 
uh, was embarking on young adulthood and uh, his ability to move forward, to go to college, to make a life and a career for himself uh, was in jeopardy because of an arrest, because of perhaps having a criminal record. What were the facts of these case? All right, well, what happened in this situation was we had a young high school student whose parents were out of the house and the car keys were conveniently located in the kitchen. And he decided. Oh boy! To be, yeah. Oh he boy! I already, to, I already see. I already to, see what's going on here. Yeah. To, to, to go. And to, and, by the way, he's not the only only seventeen year old boy to have done this. Yeah, right? I'm sure. He's not, I've right. done it. And, right. You know, I, maybe not even before before I was seventeen. But right. listen, he uh, you know, it's like a lot of movie scripts. He uh, decided to go for a ride in his right. parents' car. He thought he thought this was risky business. Yeah. That movie, risky business. I remember the, that movie. Right. Right. So he takes the car out. Uh -huh. um, he he lives in a city, and he gets about three blocks and. The cops put on their lights and sirens. He hasn't done anything wrong yet. He hadn't ran a stop sign. Did he have a driver's license? He did not have a driver's Does license. Does not have it. So that's the first thing wrong. First thing wrong. Okay. Doesn't have a license. But when the cops put their lights and sirens on, there is no way of knowing that he doesn't have a license. The, the one thing they do notice is that he does look like a very young man driving a car. And, and he was a, a man of color as well. Man of color. Which also makes, makes them just put on the sirens gotcha. by, by just habit or stereotyping mm -hmm. or racism or whatever you want to call it, Systemic right? Systemic discrimination. Yes. Is what I like to use. So they put on the lights and sirens and, and our client, I've had extensive discussions with this kid. I actually still speak to him, try to be a mentor to him. He's a really nice kid. He's, he's pursuing um, an engineering degree right now in college. He's in his first year. Um, at the moment, so he could have had a driver's license since he was 17. How come he didn't, he didn't have one? He never just applied for just it? Never he was just lazy about it? He right. lives in the city, right. takes public transportation to school, knows how to drive, just doesn't have, didn't have a license at the time. Okay. All right, so... But was he driving erratically? Did he go through a stop sign? The what was, what was the, the allegation? The allegation was that he pulled out of a parking spot without signaling. Okay, and, which, he, says, and he says that's not true. He says it's not true. Right. So the cops go to pull him over, and his mindset is, whoa, what am I going to do? I'm not scared of the cops. I'm more scared of my parents. Right. So at first, he's unsure if they're going to pull him over. He starts to drive away. He sees they're not relenting. They continue to follow him. He passes one block. They're still behind him. So he's like he's that one like a low speed low chase. Low speed chase, right? For now, right? He's he's like doing OJ in New York. Yeah. Well, OJ was really low speed. Yeah. Okay. Like but he's just he's just he's pretending just, that they're not after me. Correct. Right. After two, three, four blocks, he uh -huh. realizes they're after him. Right. What does he do? He now takes a low-speed chase and makes it a high-speed chase. Oh, God. And he's driving erratically up and down the streets of the Bronx um, for about 25 blocks. Because he thought his parents were going to kill him. Correct. But now his parents are really going to kill him. Everyone, be, you know, being an adolescent at some point in their life right. Does knows that feeling. Right. Knows that feeling. Like, I don't, you can do whatever you want to me, but don't tell my parents. Right. Um, that, that's the rationale he had. So I'm not saying what he was doing was right or wrong. Um, but he, he evaded the police for about 25 blocks, about 10 minutes or so. Um, so how did, he, how did the police actually stop I'm him? Gonna, I'm going to get there. Okay. Ran a bunch of red lights, ran through stop signs. I think at one point he drove the wrong way on one way. I mean, they could say he could have killed somebody. They Correct. could have, right? Correct. He, si he sideswiped one car. Um, it wasn't until... He got to a very, very open he, area. He saw too many Fast and Furious movies. He, he really did. Yeah. But being a young minority in the Bronx, he's very aware of the culture and what's going on. So he didn't want to just stop on a random residential street where there, were no, where there was no one around. Because he right. really didn't know what would happen when he stopped. Right. Because now his fear of his parents shifted into his fear for his life. Because he sees what happens in the news and he sees what happens on his block every day. Correct. So he actually drives to a very congested area where he pulls over in a hotel parking lot. He exits the vehicle. He's got his hands up. He's got his keys in his hand. And the cops come. They tackle him. They, they punch him. They kick him. Um, they put it, their, their feet on his head. Um, they, they draw their guns on him. There are a bunch of witnesses. They put him under arrest, and they charge him with about you know, five misdemeanors and 30 some odd traffic violations. What, were, what was the most serious uh, charges that he was facing? The most serious charge was a reckless, reckless endangerment charge, um, which basically means that he was driving his car in a manner likely to or possible to cause harm to another motorist or pedestrian. And he was facing how much time in jail? He was facing up to a year in jail for each and every count. So he could have, and it would be consecutive, so it would have been five different one years, year after year? It, it could be. It could Not been. always, but, you know, our client at the time didn't have a record. Um, most judges in New York County 
Uh, New York City would not consent a client like that. Right. Um, but it is possible. So, so I guess he gets arrested. Now it's time he has to call mom. You don't know anything about this yet. He calls mom. Calls mom. Um, she goes to the precinct immediately. Um, at the moment, she was not upset with him. Uh, when she was able to see him, he had bruises on his face. Um, he had, you know, cuts on his wrist from the tight, the, the handcuffs being too tight. Uh, his face was swollen. He had a knot on his head. She was really concerned for his well-being. Um, she immediately did everything that, you know, any responsible parent would do. She filed a complaint with the department. Um, she immediately called the lawyer. We got in the case really, really early. I was there at his arraignment. Um, they asked for a bail. And, and by the way, the reason why she was able to call David Moreno so quickly was because she already had his telephone number saved in the phone. She knew exactly who to call. God forbid she or anybody else was arrested. She didn't have to start calling her friend saying, gee, I wonder what I should do. Correct. So I was at his arraignment. The, the DA's office asked for a ridiculous amount of bail. Um, I obviously made an argument couched in the fact that he was a minor, a high school student. He had school the next day. The charges, were, to me, uh, were not that serious. What was the bail that the district attorney was asking for? They were asking for, for $10,000 bail. Okay. Uh, they wanted this young man to remain in jail uh, pending prosecution throughout the case. Um, I was able to convince the judge to ROR him. Um, I pointed out that R oh. release him on his own recognizance. Right. Okay. Pointed out that his family's very interested in his defense. He hired a lawyer. They're here in the courtroom. Mom is sitting right here. I said, Mom, stand up. Mm -hmm. Dad's sitting right here. They assured the court that they'll make sure the 17 year old son comes back to court um, and, and fight and the promise that he'll fight the charges. And the judge, you know, after making that argument, agreed and she allowed him to be out pending prosecution. Now, now at this point. He, he gets out of jail. He's facing five misdemeanors, one year consecutive sentences. He's ready to go off to college. I assume he's never been arrested before. Now, now all of a sudden, the mother and the parents and the family, they go from, I just want to make sure my kid is okay, to now the anxiety and the fear and, 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 and I guess an emotional roller coaster. What's now going to happen to my son? Did he just screw up his entire life? Yeah. Tell me how that was, because part of being a lawyer is trying to navigate all the emotional up and downs of a case to keep your clients calm, because calm clients and are, are much more able to, to, to tell you exactly what happened. They're much better to be able to express themselves, and it allows David or whoever the criminal defense attorney is to best represent them. When clients are freaking out and their emotions mm -hmm. are all over the place, you, it, 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 it becomes much more difficult to defend a client. Because that, to me, would be the biggest obstacle in this. Yeah. Tell me what you did. Well, emotions were definitely riding high. Um, we had numerous meetings here in the office. Uh, mom was very stressed out. Um, the son, you know, being, being a, a teenager, he acted like a cool customer a little right. bit. Um, but w with mom present, but in, in, in behind closed doors, you know, he was really stressed out. He's worried about his college applications. He was worried about whether or not he'd go to jail. Um, what I told them is, look, you guys are so stressed out about everything. This is why you came to me. This is why you hired me. Don't stress. Let me stress. I'll deal with it. Um, they, they were just upset at the, the level of blatant disregard for, you know, our client's, you know, uh, safety, his, uh, the abuse at the hands of the police officers, the added insult of the each and every individual ticket they, they, they issued him, the fact that the t tickets were the basis for the same exact charges, some of the same charges in the criminal they complaint. They didn't, they didn't need to tackle him? They didn't, they didn't need to punch him in the face? No. They didn't need to draw their guns? They didn't need to put their foot on his face. They didn't. Correct. They did not need to. It was beyond roughing him up. Beat him up. They yeah. didn't need to beat it him was up. For sure, excessive force. So let me ask you a question. Okay. So now he did this, and mm -hmm. we always talk about David. We always talk about this. Three ways to defend a case. You can say it wasn't me. You can say. Uh, did you have Shaggy on the show once before? Well, you say it wasn't me. Yeah, I did have Shaggy on the show. Guys that put is correct. That sound bite there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could say it wasn't me. I didn't do it. I wasn't driving. I was in the trunk. It was a ghost. Okay, but I the don't Casper think Casper defense. Casper defense. But I don't think I don't think they would buy that one. You could say, well, the law. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. The law's on my side. Or you you discovered this by violating my rights. I don't think so. They, they asked him to pull over. He didn't. He drove away. Mm -hmm. I think the law is pretty clear. You don't do that. How'd you keep this guy out of jail? Um, well, there, there's also the human defense, right? Um, our, this client is a client that a lot of people can relate to. 
Um, obviously, what he did was dumb. His actions were boneheaded. Um, they were ill-advised. They were irresponsible. You can use a million different adjectives to describe how he, how he acted that day. However, he's a kid, right? And ultimately, no one was hurt. And in defending him, every single thing I did was to highlight that. You know, he's a kid, this is what he's about, these are his grades, these are letters from his teachers, these, these are letters of support from the community, um, no one's hurt, he's willing to take responsibility for his actions, here's community service that I got him to volunteer to do on his own before the court asked him to do, he understands the seriousness of this. Give him a chance, he's going to work his behind off to get this chance, but give him a chance to continue on and be a productive member of society. And, and you went to multiple hearings. Yes. Okay, some of the hearings, at, at certainly in in the uh, review that was given by you, by this mom, she said that you went on hearings that most of the time uh, attorneys don't appear or, or the experienced attorney doesn't appear. They, they send that maybe an underling. What were some of the hearings that you went to on behalf of your client that the, the family was surprised to see you there? <laughs> Um, this became a little bit of a, a, a personal agenda. I don't want to use the word vendetta, um, obviously, because I have a lot of friends in law enforcement, but I, I hated the way this client was treated. I, I despised the fact that they, they skirted the law and, and kind of were on both sides of the law in terms of double jeopardy. They were charging him in traffic court and criminal court for a lot of the same conduct, and that didn't sit well with me. Um, so he had, you know, a court date in traffic court where he had to appear to answer to these 30 something some odd tickets. And they were asking for over $5,000 in fines. And she didn't retain us for the traffic court case. But I told her, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be there because I want to see if this cop shows up. So I went to traffic court in the Bronx, um, showed up. Everyone was really surprised. And you argued it out and every ticket. We argued every single ticket. Actually, I brought Jake Hudnett with me. Right. Um, Jake and I went up there. We argued every single Did ticket. Did the cop show up? The cop showed up. We cross-examined him, and we ripped him to shreds. We got, I think, 27 of them thrown out, and uh, the judge ruled in their favor on four of the tickets. By, by, by the way, that's just as good a job if, if anybody's ever been to traffic court. Yeah, you never yeah. get anything thrown no, out no, of traffic court. not in New York court. City. Not in New York no. City ever. So to get 27, I mean, it shows you what type of attorneys well, you and Jake are. I mean, to get 27 out of the 30 tickets. Now, don't call, don't call us with every traffic ticket, no, please okay? Don't. Please don't. Okay? <laughs> this was a special case, yes. but... But, but it goes to show what type of what type of It was so were. obnoxious because they issued all of these tickets and they were all facially insufficient. It just said uh, ran light or ran stop sign, but it didn't say, it didn't plead with any specificity what corner was he on? What time did he run this light? Right. What car was it? It was ridiculous. But the judge, she, he, he wanted to make, you know, uh, take some things into ju judicial notice and make a ruling. After the first three, I said, no, judge, we're going to go through every single one, last one of these right. because this is obnoxious. And this, this same cop is the same cop they want to use to testify in a criminal case. And I want all of this stuff to be preserved on this record. So we went through every single one. The judge was a little bit annoyed, but I had to do my job. Too bad. Too bad on the judge. Too bad. Right. I mean, when, I don't care about annoyed judges. We care about protecting people's rights. Absolutely. So, so this was before the criminal case was completed. Completed. Correct. Did this help push the criminal case to completion? Um, not per se, um, in that the, the, the DA's office or the judge in, in, in criminal court really had no interest in what happened in traffic court. Um, but it didn't hurt. It definitely did not hurt. Um, I, I didn't go to criminal court with the, you know, the decision from traffic court, but they were aware of what happened there. Um, I'm sure the cop in prepping for this case, um, would have had to disclose this to the prosecutor. Hey, we've been in traffic court already. Um, you know, I don't want to go against this guy. He ripped me to shreds. Right. I don't know what he would have said. You know, I wasn't privy to that conversation. But I'd imagine in this situation, it would be a discussion a prosecutor would have. Me being a former prosecutor, if I know my cop has testified anywhere else about this case and, and facts and circumstances, I would ask him, hey, how'd that go? Because it's relevant to how it's probably going to go in criminal court. And not only that, now the cop has to be very careful on what, what he says yeah. because you have a transcript and, and anything... he was an oath. Right, and anything that he says that contradicts the prior transcript from being cross-examined on 30 tickets goes to his credibility Absolutely. of whether he's telling the truth. So how did this case end for this kid? I hope on a happy note. Absolutely. Ended on a beautiful note. Uh, we worked out a non-criminal disposition I think our client uh, took a violation, did some community service. Upon completing community service, the violation was dismissed. He went away to school. He's in, he's in college. I think he's completing now his second year of college. Um, and he's doing great. I have to say, I have to say, I'm just reading this review again. And by the way, fantastic job. 
um, and, and the mom wrote, you know, in the end, it's a clear example of professionalism and efficiency. And that is exactly what you described here. Professionalism, efficiency, working for your client, caring for your client enough to go into, into traffic court because you were so, you were so, so, you felt he was wronged in so many different ways. So let me ask you a question before we leave. What do you have to say to people who say, oh, I get arrested, I can go to any attorney I want, uh, but you know, whoever shows up in, in the courtroom, that's the attorney I'm gonna go to. Uh, I'm gonna go to the attorney on the corner. Uh, I saw some sign that says criminal defense. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that versus working with an attorney like yourself who has extensive experience, both as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney? Why is it so important? Why is it so important to have good Absolutely. attorneys? Like any other relationship, um, doctor, patient, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, attorney, client, there needs to be trust, right? You can't just have anybody walk from, you know, inside the courtroom at 10 o'clock at night, shoveling papers, saying, hey, I'm your lawyer. You gotta be with someone that you feel confident with, that you trust, that you can reach, that you can actually speak to, that will listen to your side of the story. Um, so look, I'm not gonna disparage any lawyers out there. There are a million great attorneys in this country, um, but. And, and, and by the way, plenty of lawyers that you can trust. Correct. We're not saying we're the only trustworthy Correct. attorneys. There's plenty of trustworthy lawyers out there. As bad as lawyers get bad yeah. rap, there's plenty of good trustworthy well, lawyers I'm just out trying there. to get to the clients because we, we have a lot of clients that come to us that feel you know, almost trapped sometimes. They pay money to an attorney, they're not really satisfied with the representation, or they have a free attorney and they're not satisfied, but they, they feel some sort of blind loyalty because they've paid a couple of dollars to an attorney or because this attorney was appointed to represent them. You don't have to feel loyal, loyalty to any attorney. These cases where you're charged with a crime are all about you, right? You need to hire the attorney that you feel can represent you the best, whether that's myself, whether that's Anybody, you need to make sure you're comfortable and that you can communicate with your attorney and that your attorney, most importantly, cares about you and that the outcome, and the outcome that you want is at the first, front and foremost of what you need. And, and by the way, I just want to remind everybody, you know, even though we are New York attorneys, uh, David handles cases in New Jersey and he can almost go to almost any federal jurisdiction throughout the United States and uh, get local counsel as well and, and help you almost in any state as well. But you should give us a call but only give us a call because of this reason. I don't think anyone watching at this very moment is being arrested, hopefully, okay? But what you should do is call the number right now and you dial it and you hang up and now you have that number locked in, our in your phone. So God forbid you have the kid who does something stupid or you're with somebody who does something dumb or you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. It happens all of the time. You have good attorneys at your disposal, immediately ready. Immediately ready to work with you, to work hard for you, and to defend you and your rights, okay? Like this mom, she had our, she had our number saved. If she didn't have our number saved, maybe a different attorney would have showed up to court for that, for that bail hearing in the arraignment. Maybe he would not have gotten out on his own recognizance. Maybe it would have been a $10,000 bail. Maybe they wouldn't be able to pay that $10,000 bail and now the case goes completely different. Would have went completely different. So that's why you save our telephone number and you save it for that time when you need it. It is so simple to do, you just dial the number and hang up. And the reason why you dial the number and hang up, you wanna make sure that you have the number locked. You hear Fiona say, hi, Sparn Bernstein, how can I help you? Otherwise, you may put the number in, and you may put in the wrong number, and, ne and then all of a sudden, your son's driving down the street, getting arrested, because he did something dumb, hopefully he didn't, and you're calling the bakery, because you got the wrong number. That's why you always dial the number and hang up, and you hear Spar and Bernstein. Do it now, 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-LAWLINK. 1-800-529-5465. Obviously, David, prior successful results don't guarantee a similar outcome, but fantastic job. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. It was a great job by David. I'm just laughing, but you're calling the bakery. But you're calling the bakery. That would be a terrible thing. That would like, be a terrible thing. That's your thing. one phone call. Yeah, and you your one phone call. You're bakery. wasting on the bakery. <laughs> Hello, bakery. I met Smart and Bernstein. Damn. I have but that's why I tell everybody to dial in and hang up, because then you'll hear Fiona say, 
Hi, Spar Bernstein. Then you have it locked. You can you can take the number later, and you can be like, "That's Brad's law firm, Spar Bernstein, David Moreno, Belgium Kim, Groundhogs." However you want a good lawyer. <laughs> however you want to remember. You know, it doesn't matter what name you call it, but at least now you know. God forbid. So that's why I always tell everybody to dial the number and and hang up. Do they let you have your phone when you have your one phone call? Is that a thing? Is that a TV thing, like a no, one phone call? No, no. I mean, we've had people call us from the side of the road from DWIs. Oh, see, that's yeah, the yeah. call before you get there, folks. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So what do we have on social media? We have no calls right now, but if you do want to call, I'm happy to talk with you. 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. I, it's so funny because I'm looking here at the side of the desk. It's just we changed the lighting a little <laughs> bit in our studio, and the desk is the exact color across the board. Right, but, it's the same thing. But, but apparently on the left-hand side, it's a different color. But I just went and looked. I go, wait a second. Yeah. Because it was driving me crazy. We're all like, no, we're it's, all the, like, same no, it's color, the same just color, just the lighting. It's just the, we changed. Someone came in here and screwed up with the lighting Maybe. in here. Maybe. Maybe. I feel like that's always been there. Like, I don't I feel know, like but it's, it's uh, weird because it's bugging I just, me now because it's it. bugging me. I'm yeah, like, wait, was the side of the desk never finished and I never realized <laughs> no, this? No, that's not and I'm pointing we, it out to everybody right now? We haven't just had plywood on right. the I said, side I said, of the desk. I said, I never noticed. And then I got up. I'm like, no, it's the same exact color. But on, on, on the screen, it looks like it's a different color. I don't know. What? I don't know. I, I and with that, we have a whole bunch of people calling with their immigration questions. Kimmy, Kim, Kim, I'm, Belgium, Kim. I'm unsurprised. They yeah, see I'm, your face and they're like, that guy's going to solve that my That guy's going to help me with his immigration questions. And you know what? Yes. They're right. Our lines are open. 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Nicole in Queens. Nicole. Nicole. Hello? Hi, Nicole. Nicole. <laughs> Hello? Nicole, how are you? Nicole. Yeah, hi. How are you? Brad, good yes, evening. Good evening. I am married to a US citizen. Right. For over three years now I sent in my application. I got my work permit and um I'm waiting for an interview date for over five months now. Is that possible? Yes, my because it's is. taking about nine months now. But if it's possible you haven't gotten your work permit yet in five months? I got my work, work permit. You got yes. it. Yeah, yeah. It's about yeah. if you got your work permit, then everything's fine. It's about a nine month process right now. Nine months. Yes. For an interview day. Correct. And you, okay. you know, you, you know who do you have to thank for that? It used to be six months. Now it's nine to ten oh. months. You know who you have to thank for that? <laughs> that orange dude. You know the big, the big know. fat orange dude in the White House. That's what you have to thank for that. But, I know. but everything. I but know. if it's your baby with your husband, I hear in the background, uh, you'll be fine. She yes, uh, my baby. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and we have right. been married for oh, oh, three years. Okay, I think you're so. Fine. And by the way, um, because you've been married for three years, you're going to get a permanent green card. You won't even have to two year green card. It'll be one time and done. Okay, and how long after getting that uh, permanent green card mm -hmm. do you apply for your citizenship? Two years. Like if I get it this let, year. Let's say, let's say you get it this year. Count two years, nine months, and three days from the day you get it, and that's when you put in your citizenship application. Okay, great job. All Thanks. Right, thank you. Good luck. All right. Thank you, Nicole. Bless you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. one 800 Our lines are open. Uh, Brittany, if you can just leave the telephone number up, let everybody know, even when I speak to Mel, that our lines are open. Hopefully, we'll get a whole bunch of people calling, because right now, we only have Mel... So let's speak to Mel. Mel, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. What's up? All right. So my grandmother, she filed an I, I, I think it's an I-130, mm -hmm. the green card app um, for three of her adult children. Mm -hmm. This was maybe like over 10 years ago. And so this was actually extended to their spouses right. and to children, including myself. Although I fell off of that ages ago. You sound over 21 yeah. to me. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. So, but the case, the case was actually approved prior to her passing away, um, say around 2010. Mm -hmm. And actually just last month, uh, we received a letter from NBC. So it says welcome letter mm -hmm. um, and an invoice stating that we should proceed with payment. Um, a hundred and twenty dollar fee. Right now, my question or my concern is that my father, who was one of those three children, passed away. So that leaves my mom 
who never remarried. Where is um, she? She's in Jamaica. Yeah, that, unfortunately, that's going to be the end of the case for your mom. For the, uh, I see. For the other two... The, mm -hmm. your, your grandmother passed away too. If somebody's here legally, they can step into the shoes and do a humanitarian waiver for them. But since okay. the main beneficiary passed away, unfortunately, right. that's the end of the case for her. And the reason for why my I, mother right, and the reason why I asked where your mom is is because mm -hmm. if um, if she was in the United States when when your dad passed away, then there's a different law that we would have been able to complete the case. Oh, okay. But right. being that she's out of the country, Correct. Correct. it would apply differently. Correct. Okay. I, I thought as much, but I wanted to right. just double check. No problem. Um, and see. All right. All right. All right. Sorry about Thank that. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. No problem. All Thank right. you. Thank you. I'm all right. 1-800-529-5465. Obviously, that did not work at all, leaving the telephone number up because nobody else called. No. So let's go to Belgium Kim with social media questions. Our first question is yes. from Clifford, uh -huh. not the big red dog, a different Clifford. Uh -huh. He says, can I file for my mother if I only have a green card? No. Got to be a citizen, big red dog. <laughs> big dog. <laughs> big dog. <laughs> or is that like dog, like D-A-W-G? <laughs> no, it's more like who let the dogs out. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Lisa says, if you got your green card through marriage and want to file for your mother, but on your birth certificate, her first, uh, her first name was spelled wrong. Could you still file for her? And if so, what can you do about the wrong name? Well, yeah, you can file for her. Um, if the name is spelled wrong, you'll do an affidavit. And if they don't believe the affidavit, you'll do a blood test and blood don't lie. If she's your mom, she's your mom. Now, she did say that she's still a that she's just a green card oh, holder. Oh, so just like could big her... dog, just like the big dog, you got to wait till you're a citizen. And her husband couldn't file no. for his mother-in-law? No, no. I tried. I tried, Lisa. Matthew says if you're arrested, if you're arrested for violating conditions from a court order and you plead guilty, is that going to affect you for your green card and your citizenship? Yes. Pleading okay. guilty always affects citizenship. It can affect citizenship because you pled guilty to something that makes you deportable, and it can affect citizenship because you pled guilty to something that says you're not a person of good moral character. Every time you plead guilty, it's one of those two, most likely. Teresa Fareel says, Hi Brad, for an I-130 petition for a 15-year-old daughter who's currently in the Philippines, should me, as a permanent resident and my U.S. citizen husband, send two affidavits of support or just one? Who's sponsoring? Mom is sponsoring. So if mom can make enough money, then it's not a problem. Now, if you're going to, if she's the mom? I'm yeah, she's the, she's the mom. Okay, so, so she's the mom petitioning for her 15-year-old daughter. So if you're the mom petitioning for your 15-year-old daughter, you do the affidavit of support. If you make enough money, wonderful. If not, then your husband will they'll, uh, do the I-864 supplement form. If you're filing a joint tax return, then yes, you both have to do it because you can't separate whose income is whose on the tax return. So it depends on how, actually how you do your taxes and how much money you make. Javion says, cancellation of removal five years ago for a gun charge. So I'm assuming that says, I got a cancellation of removal. Yeah. Five years ago for a you gun charge. You know what charge. that means? He was in deportation five yeah. years ago and won his case. And won his case. That's Correct. That's amazing. what he said. So w the question is now, even though he won that case, could he still apply for citizenship? As long as he has five years good moral character, the answer is yes. That means that your probation is up and you've had a clean record for five years, no arrest, because you can't get cancellation or removal if you're an aggravated felon. Mm -hmm. So I know he's not an aggravated felony. Right. And his got his waiver in deportation. So since he got his waiver in deportation, they can't deport him a second time for it. Right. And if he has five years good moral character, he's eligible for citizenship. So that sounds like he's checking He's those checking boxes. those boxes. You're Correct. checking the boxes. Checking the boxes. Go ahead. I like yeah. giving good news, Brad. Yes. I like it when you can give yes. good news. Tina would like to know, I sent in my paperwork in January of this year. I did my biometrics in February. When should I expect my work permit? I'm currently living in Maine. Uh, did you biometrics in February, March, mm -hmm. April? By mid-May, if not sooner. If you don't get it by mid-May, let me know. Teresa has a follow-up. She was filing for her 15-year-old daughter. It's actually her husband, her U.S. citizen husband, who is filing for the 15-year-old daughter. Yeah, he makes enough again. The husband then is going to do the affidavit of support, 
Uh, if he makes enough money, wonderful. If you have a green card already and you file a joint tax return with him, you can do the I-864A. If he makes enough, then you don't have to do it. But if you're doing a joint tax return, then you should do the I-864A because again, we don't know, or not me, we, I'm not we, I'm not looking at it. Immigration doesn't know, the National Visa Center doesn't know how to differentiate whose income is whose on the tax return. Vanessa says, I married a man from Syria, and when I went to immigration to get his social security card, I found out that he was actually still married to his wife in Syria. I've been married to him for three to four years now, and I don't know where he is. How can I divorce this man? Whew. Yes, Queen, divorce him. You don't need a divorce. You were never legally married to him. That's great news. You know, you may want an annulment. Okay, and so an annulment would be you go to a judge and you say, Judge, I want to get a piece of paper to say that this marriage was null and void from the beginning. Now, you don't need a judge to say that because you can't be a bigamist. But you may in the future need to prove that this was not a real marriage. It wasn't a legitimate marriage. You may want to have something official other than you just saying he was married to two different people. So you file an annulment. Uh, now, if you don't know where the man is, then you have to uh, ask the judge to do service by publication because you have to serve him with divorce papers or annulment papers. Uh, and if you don't know where he is, you can't serve him with the papers. So you ask a judge to uh, publish the service by publication. You see those little um, legal notices in the bottom saying people are getting divorced or serving people. And you have to go through a whole rigmarole, depending on what the state is, to show I really made a good effort to try to find him and I couldn't. I had a debate with someone the other day about how to spell rigmarole. Rig Do you know? Yes. Rig, R-I-G. Yeah. A, more, uh. M-O-R, A-L-L. -L, rigmarole. Oh, that's really, you just said, wow. I would not, I didn't realize that was applause didn't worthy. I, didn't I? I don't know if that's applause worthy or not. I was just, I just felt like I wanted the spelling bee, right? Rigmarole, R-I-G. Could, could you use right. it in a sentence, please? Loquacious. L-O-G, <laughs> you know, I mean, freak you, out. Right. You are very loquacious. Yes, yeah. Um, Vina, poor Vina Taken has been trying to ask this question for a million years. I, I, she keep, and she's saying to you, a answer the question, and you're saying, I don't see it anywhere. I don't anywhere. see it. Yeah, Facebook right. doesn't always show us all your questions, but Vina got it through. She knows the deal. Fine. Sorry, Vina. So she's actually asking for her, qu her friend. Her friend is a British citizen who's married to a green card holder. He, he's filed the I-130. He'd like to know if taking a connecting flight into the U.S., uh, on his way to the Caribbean is going to affect his I-130. It's possible they may think that you're trying to come here. Now, he's a British citizen, though. He is a British citizen. Uh, probably not, because you can come on, a, on, a, on the uh, visa waiver anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. You're just connecting through. And let me, and let me, let me say, uh, we're going we're gonna to come back to social media, Kim. Okay. Belgium, Kim. How many different names do you have, do you think? I think we counted one time. I think we're up to... Six seven, or seven or eight, something right. like that. We got Belgium Kim, Kimmy right. Kim Kim. Right. Social media guru, social right. media queen. Right. You just called me social media Kim. That happened. Right. Rapid fire Kim for a hot right. second. Right. What else we got? Belgium Kim. Belgium Kim. Right. right. And then when you first started, I always forgot your name and I would say, hey, you, for like the first week. <laughs> hey, I swear you. To God. And oh, yeah. <laughs> right. That's, that's right. right. And, then, and then I realized I liked you and then I remembered your and name. Then you <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, come on the show. And then all of a sudden, like, it's a whole thing. I was just talking to someone about how I started. How I was start, like, right. I was just in a chair in that yeah, corner. In the corner, over right, there. right. You just sit there. <laughs> yeah. I don't say a word. And now you're like, oh, sit the show with me. Right. Out of the corner. Yeah. All right. All right. So, any event. We had spoken to a woman uh, by the name of Kiku Collins. Now, she's a very famous trumpeteer. She's from Japan. Okay. And she has a great American dream story about her immigration. She's also suffering from breast cancer. And, and we talked to her about her career in, in both music, her immigration from Japan to the United oh States, and how, and how she's doing with, with, you know, going through cancer treatments. Let's watch. My name is Kiku Collins and I am a trumpet player. I started playing trumpet in the fourth grade. The teacher said to me, you should probably play the clarinet or the flute, you know, more ladylike. And I have been playing ever since. I went to Manhattan School of Music to study classical trumpet with Mel Broyles. Eventually, I found my voice in the pop 
commercial disco, anything that glitters world. <laughs> <laughs> which definitely fit my personality a little more. I started off touring with Beyonce in 2006. I toured with her for about a year and I popped over to the Michael Bolton world. I played and sang with him for about three years or so. And of course, in between all of this, I'm, I'm freelancing, I'm doing little TV things here and there for other artists. But I have been playing with Gloria Gaynor for almost six years now. 75% of the gigs that I do are all turning points where I say there's no way this could get any better. But of course, two of the most epic gigs I've ever done were at the White House for President Obama. It is pretty amazing when you get to walk up to the most amazing president ever and shake his hand and he looks you right in the eye and he says, it's nice to see you. He didn't even say meet, it's nice to see you. And then the second time, he remembered me from the previous time. So I'm going, what? When I said hi to Michelle, we had almost the same dress on. And she, she was, hold on, we're, we're wearing almost the same dress. <laughs> I was like, it's probably not the same dress. <laughs> It was amazing and so you know I stood next to her in the picture and we were all matchy matchy. The Obamas were amazing people. I can't believe my life honestly. I had gotten married almost six years ago. It was pretty amazing. It was magical. A month after our wedding I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was a little nuts actually because you know after after such a happy thing you're thinking this is great I'm starting my life over and it's like, oh, that's not how I meant to start it over. Of course, you know, I had all these bookings. I, you know, had all this work. I was at a five week gig. It was so crazy when this all happened. When we first met with, with the breast surgeon that we had picked, my first thought is, okay, how do we fix this? He said, well, you know, we need to schedule surgery. And I looked at him, I said, man, I'm gonna have to cancel some really cool gigs. And he said, no. I said, but I'm dying. He said, yeah, we have to move, but I, what do you have? And I said, well, I have two television shows to tape. They said, okay. My mastectomy was two days after that second TV show, which was good because I, my brain was so overwhelmed and occupied that I couldn't think, oh, poor me, you know. I mean, it sucked, but I didn't have a moment to really think. In my business, I didn't want to tell people what was going on because I've seen it happen to other people where they basically get written off. So while I was recovering from my mastectomy, I'm, you know, walking around with the drains, it's all disgusting and I can barely move. I felt so hopeless, like what could I do? And then the two shows that I had just taped aired while I was recovering. So nobody knew because they saw me, you know, oh, she's, she's doing great. You know, this is, you know, oh, there she is again. I was hobbling around like an old lady at home. Like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. When I came back into the scene, I was, you know, starting my reconstruction and still didn't tell anyone. Then I started going through radiation, didn't tell anyone. The radiation was awful. But because I hadn't been telling people, oh, I had to keep my game face because that's what I do. We finally came out of the cancer closet, as I like to call it. There's a, a brass player's trade magazine called the Brass Herald, um, published out of England. We were interviewed for that magazine, and I had been in it a few times before, but they interviewed us as a couple. So on the front cover, you know, you see this picture of the two of us, and oh, that's so cute. Yeah, they got married recently, blah, blah, blah. But then you open it and you start reading the article and you're going, whoa, hold on, what? It's not about really being a musician. This is about getting cancer. That's how we basically told the world. It's been this ongoing rocky road ever since. I won't say that I stopped certain treatments because of my career, but it definitely was a factor. I lost me. <laughs> it sucked. But I've been able to pretty much do almost everything I would have done. A little harder now. but. What am I gonna do? I'm on more of a holistic path now, which kind of goes back to my mother's roots, which I really like. She was not a huge fan of Western medicine. My mother came here to the United States from Fukuoka, Japan. She met my father when he was in the military, got married, and uh, they moved to New Jersey. That's where I was born. The only person other than my brother that looked like this, this half Japanese, um, half German, Scottish, English, Native American. Feeling like I'm in this place where I'm allowed to do things 
that my mother couldn't do. But there were still obstacles, like playing the trumpet as a woman was not smiled upon. My mother really integrated so well, but she could cook anything. And I think that's another thing that mo moving here, that's a gift that she got from this country was, wait, there's more than just Japanese food. This is great. And so she, I mean, made killer Hungarian goulash, which I now make. <laughs> when I was in grade school, uh, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. She lived with it for 10 years. But I think one thing that was really important to her was she had a network of people. She had doctors that really, really loved her. And you're allowed to talk about it here. And actually her, her sister did pass away from it. I remember my mom came home one night and she said, oh, I was just talking to so-and-so and she's getting reconstruction. If she were in Japan, she wouldn't have had that conversation. I was basically raised to believe that I can just do things. And when you get a call to play at the White House, you think, well, of course I can do that because my mom took piano lessons and she threw pizza in the air. When you're born and raised here, two parents who were born and raised here, this is, this, this is kind of taken for granted. I mean, you can push everything in this country. If you want to do something, just go do it. That doesn't happen over there. That doesn't happen in most places. And I travel the world. I just think I'm so lucky. If, if I weren't born here, I wouldn't be a musician. I would have been, I probably would have been scared off before I started. I, I don't know where I would be or what I would be doing, but I'm guessing I wouldn't be as happy as I am. I mean, that's my mom. This is my life. I have a voice and I can say, I don't agree with you. I'm pretty sure you can't do that everywhere. And if you can, where do you find that strength to go ahead and do it? You know, you need an example. And one of them was my mother. This is my American dream. I mean, this is it. Well, very cool woman. Wow. Very, She's such very, a very, very, that's what you wrote there. I saw that. Yeah. Very, very cool woman. Yeah, I and, and a very good friend of Patrice. Yes. Rice. Also, yes. man, Patrice has some right. cool some friends. Cool friends. Yeah. I want to hang out with Patrice more. I was gonna say, I feel like my friends aren't that cool, but Patrice is one of my friends. But you so. wanna know what's very funny is when when it's just me and you. Yeah. It's Patrice. Uh -huh. But as soon as Yo Yo comes, I just start calling her Pat Rice. I know. I I, I don't knew. know why all of a sudden she becomes Pat Rice as soon as Yo Yo shows up. I knew it was an old nickname of hers, but I know right. that she also doesn't like it. So she I worked like really it. hard not to say Pat Rice, both on the it's air. It's gonna be really hard for me to now do that. See? Now that she doesn't like it, <laughs> especially that she can't say anything to me because I'm her boss. <laughs> That's all, you're right. such a troll, yeah, Brad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's uh, let's uh, get to our final bunch of questions. We have about six or seven minutes to go here. What do we got? We have a question from Tanisha. Tanisha says, I have, I've, I received an email today that my son's case was moved to a new office. He's in Jamaica and he's 15. My husband filed for him. Why would they move his I-130 and where would they move it to? His priority date was October 3rd. They can move it anywhere they want. They just kind of shift um, files where they have, um, you know, hope, more work. In one office, the, you know, the files are piled up, and they're like, oh, the place in California, they got nothing to do, and they start shipping stuff out. So it's just kind of evening out the workflow. I, I wouldn't overly worry about it. I get the I get the worry, though. Yeah. Melissa says, can you file for your kids if you're a green card holder? Yes, of course you can. Uh, and it depends on how you got your green card. Maybe they can file to join you. If they're over 21, you would have to file a new I-130 as long as they're unmarried. Take about seven years. And if they're under 21, you file an I-130. If you got your green card as an immediate relative, it'll take about two years. We got the badass herself in the comments, by the way. Ooh. Welcome Kiku Collins in oh, the comments. Oh, wow. Hello. Yeah, we like that. We liked her. We are, yeah, we are We're, we're big, loving. we're big, big fans now. I know, and yeah. everybody's, everybody is loving. Tanisha said yeah. she's so strong. Yeah. Princess said amazing Kiku. Yeah, we are, we are, we are in full agreement. Yeah, we liked her. Rita says, can you help with someone who's been here for many years with no legal status? I did pass my NCLEX and I have an active RN license, but I'm obviously not able to work because I'm out of status. Is there anything you can do? Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't know what, what your situation is with your family, but you can certainly get sponsored a job if you're out of status and you uh, overstayed on a student visa or a J visa. You can get sponsored in a job if you're out of status 
and you uh, have parents here or a spouse here that's legal and uh, you can do provisional waivers, you can get sponsored in a job uh, even as a registered nurse if you're 245i. So there are options out there. That doesn't mean you're going to fit into any one of those, but it's certainly worth looking into. We've got Middleton who says, I married an America, a U.S. citizen almost two years ago. My sister wants to come to the U.S. to visit us and to work. We already called one of the recruiting agencies in our neighborhood, and they said that they can't do anything unless she finds a fiancé so that she can come. What should we do? Find her a job that wants to sponsor her for a green card. I was going to say, that sounded like terrible advice. That's Find terrible a fiance. Advice. Find a fiance. <laughs> hey, uh, you, come here. <laughs> you get to marry yeah. me. No, that's illegal. That's, that's not illegal. A thing. That's not a thing. All right, what else? Rowena says, I'm an immigrant resident living in Buffalo. What's the easiest way to bring my 27 new, uh, 27 year old son who is unmarried here in New York? Well, certainly you can file for him it's an i-130 that's the easiest thing in the world to do it's the, it will take also a long time seven years but if you say what's the easiest thing to do fill out the i-130 and mail it in if you're asking what's the fastest way then i don't know we would have to have a consultation and figure it out samantha says that she did her biometric in november of last year and has not received any kind of answer could you tell her what exactly could be causing that delay what happened she did her biometric in november and she hasn't heard anything. You screwed up the paperwork or the mailman lost the work permit. It's one or the other. Lauren wants to know, I was living in Florida since I was nine years old. I'm now 29 and I had a green card. And over the years I got arrested a few times, which led to three felonies oh my and God. my eventual deportation. Aye, aye, aye. I'd like to know what my chances are of ever actually getting to live in the States again. What were the felonies for? The, we, I gave you all the info What I family got. does she have here? I mean, since she, if she was here since she was nine, the, I'm assuming most of them. The, uh, I have no idea. The, I think the first step we would have to do is go get your file and see what you did. And then take it from there. I don't know what you did. I know it's serious because it's three felonies. Three felonies, Usually right. three felonies, is, is it's not a good thing to have on your record. But that doesn't mean that people with felonies can never come back. It depends what you did. Yvonne says, if a man came here from Mexico over 10 years ago and was deported and signed a will not return form, but then he came back because he had a baby on the way, and ever since he's lived here for the past eight years. What was a, this form he filled out? He, it says that he signed a will not return form. Where did he sign such a form? And who asked him to sign a mm -hmm. will not return form? Listen, uh, this makes it sound like USCIS deported made it. him. Yeah, deported him and then made him promise never to come back. Well, is that yeah, a thing? I, I don't know, but I mean, you can certainly get deported at the airport, found inadmissible. I never heard of a, I promise not to, there's no such form as, oh yeah, let me sign this here. I promise not to return. But there's a, certainly a thing that if you get deported and then return, maybe. I don't know what he did, but it sounds to me that he got deported at some point in time or took a voluntary departure at some point in time. And if he did, then, and he returns without permission, then that's a crime. That's becoming an illegal alien. It's the only time when you return without permission after a deportation. Aha. Uh -huh. So he, so what he... I don't know. So we would have to, I, I, we, we do what's called the Freedom of Information Act request. Mm -hmm. This is what we will do. And I will get your records and see exactly what you signed, but there's no such thing as a do not return form. Now, they did say that his job is net, is willing to sponsor him. They don't receive any welfare. But, they pay but, their taxes. But, but if you got deported and returned illegally, and as soon as you file something and you say, I'm here and I want to file something, and the government sees it, they're going to say, wait a second. This guy was ordered deported and he's back in America. Let's go get him. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. So don't do anything until you come see me first. Okay. We've got a question from Evans, Evans, who says, Evans. my daughter is married and got married in Eastern Europe. How can I give her a visa just by herself to visit me for just a month? I don't want her, her new husband here. What are the requirements? I live in Tampa. She is not a fan of her son-in-law. She does not like that. I don't, <laughs> don't let that crop in this country. Uh, the, that, just my daughter. Yes, don't you dare right, let that yeah, no that, good no, man no, in here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
you know, like I'm thinking like this guy's like a beer swell. Like, <laughs> right. You know, You're thinking like a Homer Simpson. Yeah, yeah Homer You're Simpson. You're thinking yeah. a Homer Simpson. Right. I mean, maybe he's a great guy. I'm not, yeah, we're, not, we're not disparaging <laughs> your, your, your son in law. But uh, she has to go to the U.S. Embassy and prove ties. That Okay, so she's leaving the husband behind. Maybe she's leaving children behind, a good job, property, whatever it is. You've got to prove ties to your home country. That's the key thing. We have a, a question from Norma who says, if I'm a spot, if I'm getting, I'm sorry, could I get sponsored as a caregiver in the Philippines? So I think the question is, what, I'm going to do I got it. Thing. I got the question. You got it. I live in the Philippines. Yep. Can someone sponsor me while I wait in the Philippines to be their caregiver in the United States? And the, and the answer is absolutely yes. Aha. See, I like yes. good news. Rhea says, my eldest daughter petitioned for me and I'm now, I've now been an immigrant for two years. My husband and our other two children who are 19 and 16 are currently still in the Philippines. Could I go ahead and process their paperwork or am I gonna have to wait until I'm an American citizen? These are her children? These are, these are her children and her husband. And wh how did she get her green card? Through her eldest daughter who was already a, green, uh, who was already a citizen. Why is the eldest daughter not filing for the husband? Well, I don't is know. Is that, that they share the same daughter? Maybe. I don't the, know. And the answer is, Maybe yeah, they and don't. The answer is yeah. yes, you can file for your kids right now as long as they're unmarried and you should do so immediately. We've got a question from Chell who says, I'm an immigrant here, but I lost my green card. It's so expensive to replace your green card. Is there any way that I can replace it without having to pay the replacement fee? Yeah, ask for a fee waiver. You're allowed to do that. Okay. We've got a question from FEMA who says, I've got a daughter in the Philippines and she's 21 years old. I'd like to bring her over here, but I know that now she's aged out. What am I supposed to do? Could I still file? What was the question? She's got a daughter in the Philippines, but unfortunately she just, uh, she turned 22. So she has now aged out and she's worried that she can no longer petition for her. Can she? Yes, as long as she's unmarried, you can file for her. By the way, Barbara Lord, not liking, not liking the questions from the Philippines anymore. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand. Wait, this, is, this, is, this is kumbaya, Barbara, okay? We want to help everybody here. Let's not, let's not, you know. I agree. Let's not pick on anybody. We, we love all we the We love people. everybody. Let's not pick on people. Wayne yeah. says, if I was here since I was 10 and I've been in the country for almost 14 years, my stepdad, um, he, he did not officially marry my mom, is a citizen and my mom is about to become a citizen. Am I already a citizen? Say that again. So it says not officially he married. I'm gonna read it verbatim. Yes. If I was here since I was 10, and I've been in the country since I, for 14 years, so he's now 24. My stepdad, not officially, he married my mom. That's an official stepdad. That sounds like an official yes, stepdad. That's yes, where I got, yes. I got hung okay. up. Is a, is a citizen, and my mom is about to become a citizen. Does that mean that I'm automatically a citizen? No. Oh, no. You don't get it through stepdad. All right, so we're at the end of our show. We are at the end of our show. Okay. Uh, what's the comment of the day? Uh, our, our comments of the day go actually to two people. We had two Broad Squad birthdays this week. Yes. Annie Palmer and Belma Gale, they partied it up same around the same time as Yo-Yo. <laughs> 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 I wish we could actually play the real no one, lyrics. but they would they would like <laughs> shut our broadcast off if we start singing the birthday song. All right, so happy birthday to both of you. I hope you had a wonderful week, a wonderful birthday. All the best, of course, and all the best to the entire Brad squad. Thank you, Kimberly, Kim, Kim, Kimmy, thank Kim, you, Kim, Brad, Kim. Brad, Brad, and uh, thank you everybody for watching. And have a great weekend. Be safe, and we'll see you all on Monday. So Sam, as part of the production, we have to say this disclaimer at the end of the show. Do you mind reading it for me? Okay, but you know, Brad, I have to do everything around here. It's bad enough. I've got to remember everything that happened on the episode from the previous day. Forget it. I'll do it. The proceeding was information only and not specific legal advice. Consult an attorney about your individual situation. Prior successful results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. To make an appointment with the Spar and Bernstein Law Firm located at 225 Broadway in New York City, call 1-800-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-
529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Easy to remember, 1-800-LAWLINK. That's 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. Once again, make a call to 1-800-529-5465. And of course, link up with the law offices of Spar and Bernstein, located at 225 Broadway on the fifth floor. If I were you out there, make the call, make the link, make the connection, make it Spar and Bernstein. 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. That's one 800 529 5465 and now conveniently located in Hartford, Connecticut on 1 Congress Street. Visit us in Connecticut or in New York at 225 Broadway. That's 1-800-529-5465. 1-800-LAWLINK. 1-800-529-5465.